Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 16 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. This is probably one you've been waiting for for quite some time. I took a break over the last couple of days to play around with uh, Rotary Craft a lot in single player and um, and then also play on a server. Um, but here we are to talk about the two uh, turbines, the two engines that uh, run using jet fuel. So we're going to get right into it because there's quite a bit to talk about. We're going to talk about how, first how to build these things and also what they're, what you can, uh, a few applications uh, for this one, what you can do with it, and to show you the uh, power output and a little bit of how they work. So um, to get started, we'll take a look first at the micro turbine. Uh, the micro turbine, which is the first one that you're probably going to end up getting, is not quite so difficult uh, to craft. Um, it does require a lot of steel because all of these pieces here, they take lots and lots of steel. So three base panels, a shaft unit, two steel ingots, a compressor, a combustor, and a turbine, which we haven't learned how to craft yet. But just to remind you, I mean, these all take a lot of power. The compressor takes an ignition unit, a lot of steel. Uh, used to make uh, the micro turbine. It's basically a big hunk of steel with an ignition unit in it. Anyway, so the turbine, which this requires, um, uses even more steel. So it's a compressor followed rounded by eight propeller blades. And we learned how to craft these way back in uh, one of the earlier episodes. But just to remind you, each blade is a base panel, a steel ingot, and a shaft unit. So not uh, terribly cheap. So you're going to need a lot of these. So that's how you get the turbine. So you craft the micro turbine, and this is what it looks like. I've got both of them set up over here. We're gonna talk about this one first. Uh, it looks like this. It's kind of cute, a little thing. It's got a little uh, propellery thing at the back. Um, power comes out the side that has this thingy on it, and um, it, uh, it's important to note that both of these engines uh, are compatible with the engine control unit, and I I highly recommend using the engine control unit for both of these because you're not going to want them chewing through your fuel. They use a lot of fuel, so you're, you're definitely going to want to turn these things off, turn them on, throttle them down, because these things put out so much power that you could very easily use the ECU to throttle them down and still get decent power, and they won't consume fuel as quickly. Anyway, we're going to flip on the micro turbine, and it makes a, a little high-pitched whining sound. Um, so you're probably going to want to um, muffle its 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 sound because um, especially if you're the kind of person that can't stand high-pitched noises I, I had a friend growing up who uh, couldn't stand high-pitched sounds they just gave him terrible headaches whenever they were happening so if, if you're kind of like that then you might want to set the wool up to begin with because the micro turbine is pretty pretty high pitched so uh, what you're probably noticing here is that you unlike uh, the other engines like the gas engines um, or, or pretty much any of the other engines we've been using is that you don't get max power right away um, the micro turbine and the gas turbine both have a spin up sp uh, time that where they are consuming fuel and but they have a they haven't reached their maximum power they have to spin up to speed um, however, this is the amount of torque that the micro turbine puts out. It, it outputs very, very, very little torque at a ridiculously high speed. That's what the micro turbine does. So um, keep in mind, any, anything you want to use the micro turbine for, if it requires torque, you're going to need quite a few gears. But uh, our micro turbine over here, it's, it's spinning up. Um, this is going to be a little bit longer. So we're, while this spins up, we're going to go over and I'm going to show you um, a use for the micro turbine, uh, an important use, I think, for the micro turbine. So in the most recent versions of Rotary Craft, and I think he changed it back in version 20, but I'm not 100%. But since the video on the bedrock breaker, the power requirement for the bedrock breaker has gone up considerably. Uh, the bedrock breaker now requires, and I have one here, uh, two megawatts of power as a as opposed to what it did before, which was 512. So you can't run the Bedrock Breaker off of one hydrokinetic engine. Um, Rick had decided that was too easy, which it, it really it really was. You, didn't, you could essentially go straight from uh, steel shafts to Bedrock without ever having to touch diamond. Um, now you can't do that. If you want to use a uh, hydrokinetic engines to power your bedrock breaker you have to use four of them which is a lot of steel so you can do that or you can use a micro turbine um, because the micro turbine does output uh, the exact amount of power that the um, bedrock breaker uh, wants however there is a 
uh, a bit of a caveat in the fact that it, you're going to need a really high gear ratio um, because you have to get from 16 newton meters of torque all the way up to 8192 and that's a 512 to 1 gear ratio um, and I figured that out just by taking the 8192 and dividing it by 16 gives you 512 then you can divide 512 by 16 to get 32 so you know you're going to need two 16 gearboxes and a 2 to 1 gearbox and this is the way to do it. Um, unless you want to use the um, shaft junction splitting method that I used uh, before, but I think you'd still have to, you'd have to probably do it more than one time. Because remember, we had to split it in half to avoid using diamonds uh, uh, at a quarter of this. So that's a really complicated thing. You'd use a lot of steel doing that. So the way to do this is you need to use a diamond 16 to 1 gearbox. Uh, which I know is a lot of diamonds um, because it takes five diamonds for I think you get eight gears out of it. Um, still, that, that, that's not terrible, but you still have to probably use about ten diamonds to make this thing. Um, you wouldn't use all ten of them because you wouldn't use all the gears. But you have to make shafts too, so yeah, quite a, quite a lot of diamonds. Um, but once you've put a 16 to 1 gearbox of diamond on here, you can then use steel um, because the diamond gearbox uh, in torque mode will lower the uh, uh, speed to where you can use steel uh, gearboxes and steel shafts, uh, which is quite nice. So if you want to transport the micro turbines power output uh, over distance using shafts, and I don't know why this isn't filling it back up, but if you wanted to do that, then you 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 could totally stick a 16 to one on here and then run um, some steel gearboxes and steel shafts. So I'm just going to take a steel shaft and connect it here, just so that you can see that yes the bedrock breaker is operating. It's taking 18 seconds per uh, per operation and of course this has to operate 16 times before it, uh, it I think 16 times before it breaks this, I'm not sure. But uh, it's basically the same speed that our hydrokinetic was running it before. So just to prove to you that this does work, so that's the 16 to 1 diamond gearbox, a 16 to 1 steel gearbox, and then a 2 to 1 diamond gearbox. And you have to use diamond for this because the torque that it's outputting is too high for steel. So that's one use for the micro turbine um, powering the bedrock breaker. I'm sure you can think of many more. Um, basically, the um, using the micro turbine to power the bedrock breaker, you'll do that if you have a lot of if you have if you have more diamonds than you have uh, available steel. Um, I did some math on this, and to use a hydrokinetic engine, uh, to use four of them to power the bedrock breaker, it requires an eight to one ratio. Uh, in uh, speed mode because the torque that that, that, that four of them output is 65,536 newton meters and you only need 8,192. Now obviously if you have a ton of steel you can still use four hydrokinetic engines connect it straight into the bedrock breaker and it will operate. The problem is it will operate ridiculously slowly because you're only going to be running it at 16 uh, newton meters, so it's going to run slower than that micro turbine was running it. So if you wanted to do it optimally with four hydrokinetic engines, you need an eight to one gearbox, and the only way to, uh, that you can get that is you have to use diamonds. However, you use a lot less diamonds doing that than you would making a 16 to one and an eight to one. So if you have a ton of steel, you can still use the hydrokinetic engine method. Um, if you if you have uh, quite a lot of diamonds, then you could use the um, micro turbine and gearboxes. Now that's the micro turbine. So it outputs two megawatts. I'm sure you can think of a lot of uses for the micro turbine. Um, so now let's quickly get into the con uh, the gas turbine because there's quite a lot to talk about with this thing as well. So the gas turbine, like the micro turbine, requires a compressor and a combustor. It also requires a turbine, but it's a compound turbine. We'll learn how to make this in a second. Uh, a shaft unit, a base panel, three steel ingots, and a diffuser, which we learned how to craft in the jet, the pulse jet uh, engine episode. Um, However, you need this compound turbine, and this is where things get a little tricky, because the compound turbine, first you need to make two turbines, which is a lot of steel, and then a shaft core, but then you need tungsten ingots, and uh, we, ha we don't know how to make tungsten ingots at the moment, um, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So to get tungsten, there's only one way to get tungsten at the moment, that I, uh, and that's to run redstone ore uh, through an extractor. So you're going to need a silk touch. Uh, of some description, and if you're in Monster Mod Pack, I would probably recommend using Tinker's Construct to get your Silk Touch. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, but you're going to need Silk Touch, and then 
run your redstone ore through the extractor. Now, I have a coil set up to give this thing a ridiculous amount of power, just so that it'll run, and, and this sort of bugs out if you are giving it this much power. Um, but I just want it to run really fast, that's why it's running really, fa really, really fast here. Uh, so let's just start grabbing this stuff out. Remember, that was one stack of redstone ore, and we'll see how much of all of these things that we end up getting. Alright, so we just ran a stack of redstone ore through an extractor, and we ended up with five, a little less than five stacks of, uh, of redstone ore flakes, and then 22 uh, tungsten flakes. So yeah, tungsten, uh, you get it at a very low rate by running redstone through, but, you know, you'll, 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 you'll end up with what you need to, like, make the gas turbine and stuff, and and so if I hit uh, you. Now, how do we make the tungsten flakes into actual tungsten ingots? Well, we have to do that by using a friction heater to heat a furnace. Um, you can't do it any other way. I, I was kind of disappointed that you can't do it with a pulse jet, but pulse jet can't get that hot. So um, I've got my friction heater set up over here. I'm going to throw my uh, tungsten flakes. Uh, I'm going to do that in a second, actually. But you're probably wondering, how much power do you have to put into a friction heater in order to heat a furnace to 1350? Well, the answer to that is 3.146 megawatts. And it doesn't matter what the torque is or what the speed is, as, as long as this uh, equals 3.146 megawatts, um, I, th I think. But I know that this works. Um, so uh, is, the, is the minimum that you need uh, that I've found. So this will heat up to just above 1350, uh, but it won't go very much above it. Um, it's going to stop any second now. Yep, 1365. So uh, 3.146 megawatts is pretty much the minimum that you need. Um, and now this is not a, uh, a ratio that's, easy, that's divisible by two, um, an amount of power, but you can get this amount of power. I don't know if you can get this exact number by using shaft junctions to split it up and stuff, but you could probably get this with something else like a solar tower. But if you can't get like this exact amount, you're going to need at least uh, more than this. So um, at eight kilorads, you're going to need more than 384 torque or you're going to need at least 384 torque to get the friction heater up to 1365. But once your friction heater is up to 1365, uh, or, you know, 1350, you can throw your tungsten flakes in there and it will smelt up very, very quickly. Um, and because this is really high speed. Now, I wouldn't leave the furnace at this speed for too long because you might melt it. Um, I don't know how long it takes to melt it, but... And you'll see that from each one of these redstone flakes, you're going to get four redstone. So uh, if you're going to do this, if you're going to go for getting uh, getting the tungsten, you're going to end up with a really crazy high amount of redstone dust. So uh, yeah, I, I would highly recommend trying to get silk touch as soon as you can if you're going to go for the, the gas uh, turbine because you're going to want as much redstone as you can get find. You're going to want the ore for so you can run it through the extractor. Um, so yeah, that's how you get your tungsten or ingots that you need to craft the compound turbine. And once you've got your compound turbine, throw it in here, get yourself a gas turbine. Now I'm going to turn off this micro turbine, just because. Now, we're going to talk about the gas turbine. Now before I flip this on, I want to talk about the fuel consumption of these engines. So I've got an infinite reservoir of jet fuel here, and if we look at the micro turbine, we can see that it that with a full tank on the micro turbine, it can it can run for eight hours. Now it's currently storing 237,000 millibuckets. Uh, I think it can store 240, and that's the same amount of, of fuel that the gas turbine can store. So remember, this thing can run for eight hours on this amount of fuel. However, the gas turbine can only run for an hour and 20 minutes on this same amount of fuel on the full tank. Uh, so you can see the, just what the disparity is. I mean, it, it's not quite eight times, but um, this thing, this gas turbine will chew through your jet fuel like nobody's business, which is why I highly recommend the engine control unit for this, especially since you can throttle it down um, because it's producing so much power that even if you throttle this thing down quite a bit, it'll still produce a, a, a very useful amount of, of power. And remember, when you use the ECU to lower the speed of, of an engine, it, it increases its fuel efficiency. Now, let's flip this on. And you can witness the amazingness of the gas turbine. It, it does have quite an impressive sound effect. All right, that's the gas turbine running. I'm going to put wool over it to muffle the sound, just because that is quite loud. 
There it goes. Okay, so uh, that's the gas turbine. Yeah, it's quite impressive. It does, again, it takes a while to, to spin up, but you can see that it, spin, it spins up orders of magnitude more um, power quickly or faster. Quickly? Oh, that was terrible. Than the micro turbine. This thing produces a, a, a crazy amount of power, 65 megawatts at 1024 uh, newton meters of torque um, and a ridiculously high speed. So, yeah, 67 megawatts at uh, 65,000 radians per second. So this is quite impressive. It's, it's, it's a lot of power um, that this thing outputs. But remember that it does chew through its fuel like nobody's business. Look how fast that's chewing it through it. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it does chew through fuel quite quickly. And you've got to be careful with this thing because um, it's slightly realistic in the fact that if, if you stand in front of this engine, you 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 will get sucked into it. You can get sucked in to your gas turbine. Um, I, I don't know. I think maybe maybe other entities can get sucked in too. I would imagine so. So you're gonna wanna like you're gonna wanna probably grab like fences or, or walls and like build like a perimeter around here. I don't know how how long you'd have to make it, but you know maybe like that. I don't think that it will affect the power output having uh, blocks uh, in front of it. Oh, that did that did. Okay, so don't put a block right behind it. But uh, you can put the blocks um, as long as you leave one block of space behind this thing, it'll it won't it, it'll run. So I would highly recommend setting up uh, a fence like this or you know some other kind of impassable barrier, um, just to make sure that you and or other things don't get sucked into the gas turbine. Because if something does get sucked into this turbine, not only will it die. So if you get sucked in there, you will die, but it will explode. So the gas turbine will violently explode, and you don't want that. That that will be uh, quite bad. Um, I don't know how big the explosion is, but I'm not going to test it here. I I'm I'm I don't want to ruin my area, but I'm pretty sure that the explosion it will be quite uh, significant. Um, probably blow up anything that's next to it. And of course, this thing is a huge investment in resources, so you definitely don't want it to explode. But as you can see, the gas, uh, the gas turbine produces 67 megawatts, ter a crazy amount of power. Um, so what can you do with that? Well, I mean, you, you could use that to run an extractor if you wanted to. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot of things in rotary craft that probably need this amount of power. Um, will need it, but this thing can be used to run things very, very quickly. However, you know, what this what this kind of is, is there are a lot of machines in Rekus Mod Reactor Craft that, that require um, quite a bit of power to get going uh, to get started with Reactor Craft. So maybe you could, this is kind of like a bridge. I mean, you can use this definitely to get yourself into Reactor Craft or into other things or just to produce a crazy amount of power if you throw a rotational dynamo on this. Actually, you can't do that because the uh, rotational dynamo was, um, nerfed quite some time ago it only goes up to a certain amount of torque so you would have to split this power up uh, if you wanted to do anything like that with it but anyway that's the gas turbine produces lots and lots of power chews through fuel very very quickly and it's quite dangerous so make, remember set up some sort of a fence on the other uh, in front of this thing so you and other things can't get sucked into it you cannot use this as a mob grinder because it will explode Okay, that's the that's the gas turbine. That's what we got to talk about now. Um, speaking of uh, mob grinders, um, uh, let's do another one of those. Uh, what do you want to see? Um, sort of a thing um, for the next uh, next episode. Um, I could talk about how to set up a mob grinder with uh, Rotary Craft. So we'd go over the uh, the, the spawn controller and uh, also I forget what it's called off the top of my head, but it, it is a mob grinder block. And um, so we could talk about that, um, which would probably be, be nice to know about because you're going to have to farm blazes and stuff like that to get yourself uh, materials for jet fuel. Or we could talk about um, a couple of the other utility machines, like um, we'll talk about the, uh, the wood cutter, we'll talk about flywheels, we'll talk about um, uh, belts, we'll talk about uh, the um, uh, variable gearbox, whatever the heck it's called. Uh, I forget off the top of my head. So we could talk about um, the CVT unit. Um, so yeah, just let me know in the comments what you want to talk about next video. And because uh, because now it's basically just a bunch of stuff we haven't talked about already that we're gonna want to talk about. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you've learned about the micro and gas turbine. Um, so uh, yeah, um, let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.